Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 10 minute wrap up for Bitcoin. So what an interesting story we have right here, guys. Bitcoin makes that recovery back down to the green vector candles in the range, struggling at that psychological 20K zone. Moonboy status was engaged at this point, but unfortunately, they decided to roll price over. At the end of the day, guys, the takeaway from this video for you is to understand that all they care about is liquidity. Macros come into this. There's obviously news announcements that came out, which showed that consumer confidence is still pumping. They were buzzing for it today, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. Here's your consumer confidence that came out today at 3 p.m. What does it talk about? Survey of 3,000 households which asked respondents to rate the relative level of current and future economic conditions, including labor availability, business conditions, and overall economic situation. <laughs> 108, ladies and gentlemen. Is the idea of recession or is the idea of the problem or global recession ain't kicking with the guys in the States? Is that because the labor market is still thriving? Now, the Fed keeps on banging on about the idea that it needs to try and reduce the labor market advance so that they can really go forward with their projections to manage inflation. But it ain't happening. Why? Because oil is taking a nosedive. Look at this bad boy here. It's just been dropping. Things are cheaper now. That ain't no problem. If oil's not going to cost me money, it's not going to cost me much to go to work. And happy days, i got a bit of spare cash on the side. I'm feeling optimistic. But if the masses which contribute to the behavior of the economy and the outcome of the economy are in denial that things are bad, why on earth is Wall Street running to the pits? Now, let's just go over here for a second. Take this with a pinch of salt, ladies and gentlemen. Bitcoin is a lucrative, very volatile asset class, okay? Now, what you've got to understand with this play right here, ladies and gentlemen, is we were paying attention to the fact that Bitcoin seemed to struggle historically at the 800 EMA. Now, although this zone was a point in the chart that Bitcoin would have the tendency to initiate a stop hunt to the upside, we did have liquidity inside of this zone. Check out the book map, ladies and gentlemen. During the live stream today, we were talking about the idea that Bitcoin needed to show strength above the VWAP. And here is the VWAP right here. Yet it couldn't achieve it. You go back, you can see bright as day at that wall of liquidity right here, sell side, was a problem for Bitcoin. They didn't want to send price in that direction. Institutional traders found it that they could sell better at this point as opposed to this point. Now, down below, we didn't really see that much commitment. So these could have acted as spoofs, luring in the trader to believe that there's interest in these zones. But by simply focusing on the VWAP itself, which is this white line right here, you understand if the commitment's going to be present. Usually the VWAP shows and dictates how price is going to fare out for the rest of the session. And you can see that during this balance in this zone right here, the delta was coming in positive. As you can see, we had um, 1,082 Bitcoin picked up in this zone. And as we go down lower, you can see there's only 794 in that zone. And then, of course, 656 in this area right here. So what does that tell you? That the interest to mark price higher is actually fading. But the traders who are coming in buying at this point were the sell liquidity for Mr. Market Maker. Now, we had a gentleman in the Patreon itself asking the question as to whether or not he was going to hold his short. And I went into the narrative of helping him understand why, if Bitcoin was going to go up, what zone would need to be taken? Now, you've got to zoom out, ladies and gentlemen, and you need to understand something. The next point of interest in the chart for Bitcoin at that point in time was the key 20,500 zone. That's where there were liquidations in the chart. Now, the high block was showing us a different story, ladies and gentlemen. At this point in time, before I refresh the chart itself, you could see down below we had... $287 million worth of long liquidations. Going even further, we have 314, 41. And then as we go down, you can see we start increasing in the size of liquidations. And then you had this bad boy down here at 19.475, sorry, 19, which was in collectively just shy of about three, four billion dollars worth of long liquidations in this zone. Now, utilizing the hybrid system, ladies and gentlemen, the question that is granted is this. 
How could you know that this was going to happen? Well, you can't. You never know it's going to happen. And the only way that you can approach trading is if you see things in terms of probabilities. What's the percentage that your trade will work out in your favor if you decided to run a short from here? You have to work out the narrative. Well, you've got a big green vector candle right here. You've got an imbalance in the chart that principally Mr. Market Maker is going to look to try and take advantage of. The macros are pointing to the downside anyway, and Bitcoin has a habit of rejecting this 800 EMA, as you can see in the past. It hasn't shied away from showing resistance at this point, okay? We already came up above it in this zone right here for it to only collapse to the downside. Now, during that time, I believe, if I'm correct, was the FOMC, okay? Crazy moves to the, um, sorry, the consumer report was the CPI. Bitcoin takes the nosedive. So it spent a little bit of time. So this as a news play was Mr. Market Maker marking price up. People in denial that Bitcoin can go any lower. And he's facilitating that obligation for the retail trader. Stopping volume candle one, stopping volume candle two, stopping volume candle three. What do we mean by stopping volume candles? Pretty simple. If Mr. Market Maker is going to try and build his positions inside a specific zone and get ready to release them to the opposite direction to come back into the vector candle range itself, he has to stop price from going further up. Why? Because if he engages with more lick transactions right here and encourages more traders to step in and move price up, that means what he's tried to do with the move from this area here, he's going to have to try and do it further up. But if the retail trader went long from here and from here, he's taking profit up here. So Mr. Market Maker's objective to get his shorts filled and closed so that he can run price back down and hit all the liquidation points for the retail trader who went long in this zone. If he has to do it up here, he may not get that access to that liquidity because why? Retail trader would have paid himself. So that's why when you see a stopping volume candle right here, ladies and gentlemen, you pay close attention to the idea that price may actually be getting ready to turn. If we jump over to the current price action for Bitcoin, what did you see? Eventually, the stopping volume candle right here at the 800 EMA led price into that narrative. Okay. Now, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we ain't got long. Moving forward, Bitcoin has consolidated and held inside of this zone. The Pattern Watchers community made a killing today off these shorts, ladies and gentlemen. Mad love and respect to all my guys and to all the guys in the Patreon itself. Just to keep you aware of that as well, you are no longer being double charged if you join at any point in the month, ladies and gentlemen. So if you joined on the 29th of the month, you won't be charged again on the 1st. So Patreon have been kind enough to get rid of that. So happy days. You won't have to worry about being double charged so you can join at any point in the month. And what you'll get in the hybrid system in the sense of the uh, market, in the actual patron itself, sorry, you're just going to get deep dives of price action, okay? We're talking about, very. here's the story that we had right here with the gentleman asking the question about whether he should keep his long open or his, sorry, his short open or close it. In the end, the gentleman actually did close the trade down here. He held onto the trade because of the practices of the hybrid system itself, Okay. Now, something that I want you guys to understand as well, it's not all about vector candles and, you know, price deviating from one point to the next. There has to be some form of understanding as well. Okay, check this out. Earlier on in the Discord, we had this conversation and I stated to the patrons inside of here saying, look, if this move to the upside for Bitcoin is going to sustain, price needs to hold last week's high, which sits at the 19,959 which is in this zone right here, 195995. There we go. This area here, okay? That was the point of interest for Bitcoin at that zone. What is going on here, man? There's your boomer moment, ladies and gentlemen. Inside that zone, all right? If Bitcoin was going to continue higher, it would need to hold that point, okay? So if we go down to five-minute time frame, see that last week's high sits right there. Now, if they were to come back into this zone and bounce away from it, we'd get validation of it. Why? Because they would have hit the previous pools of liquidity where they last came into and then shifted away from it. We go on to say that price is yet to test this zone, but looking at Dixie, which is the dollar dominance, they are running for profits each time they move up and come back down sharply. As it stands, we are in a balance. 
What I mean by balance is price action is trading sideways. As you can see, that's exactly what the story was right here. Now, going over from that, we can see that if Bitcoin invalidates the 50 EMA on the 15 minute time frame, it's to the pits we go. The day's VWAP has yet to be tested. So did it invalidate the 50 on the 15 minute time frame? Yes, it did. They had invalidated the last week's high. And if you go closer into the chart, I know this video is more than 10 minutes, but hey, we're learning. You get closer into the chart, you can see on the one minute time frame that this was the last point of interest in the chart where Bitcoin would have in essence continued back up if he wanted to make sure that he got the retail traders interest at this zone. But if you notice on the one minute time frame, look at the collection of green vector candles appearing above what? Appearing above the key 20,000 zone, ladies and gentlemen. Remember the story? Mr. Market Maker likes to build his positions above and below key notable areas. He gets his shorts filled at the highest possible point in the chart because that's what you do. You buy something of value and if you want to sell it, you want to wait until you can sell it at the highest possible price so that when you've trapped enough traders, and this is the trickery of the marketplace, when you've trapped enough traders into the belief that price is going to go up with these several hits high, that is when you initiate the process to take advantage of all the traders who went long inside of this zone right here and hit all their lovely liquidation zones all the way down here. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Market Maker did exactly just that. So now that we've had this imbalance in the chart, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going into Asia tonight. Asia too is going to react to the fact that the consumer sentiment in the US is pumping right now. Going over to the dominance of the dollar, ladies and gentlemen, you can see bright as day that dollar took that move to the upside. And as I said earlier on, talking about in the Discord, the fact that dollar dominance is all about taking profits. So if you look here, for every sharp move down is met with a faster move back up because they were taking profits. Okay, look left. They fully recovered the red vector candle all the way up to the wick. And then you've got this one zone right here, which they narrowly missed up there. Okay. Now, the question on everyone's minds is how much more can the dominance of the dollar go? At what point is it going to break? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you go into the five minute time frame for the dollar dominance, you can see they sharply come back down into this zone. Now they're holding the 50 EMA and they've left the footprint right here for the potential for them to come back up into that zone. Now, Asia seems to get into the habit of selling off in the dollar dominance chart. Okay, so just be mindful. The move could continue lower. But be careful, because they can then sharply come back up. You can see that's the case. Going over to the USDT chart itself. Guys in crypto, traders, institutional fund managers, or anyone that's trading in crypto, sold it, sorry, brought it yesterday. In last night's Asian session, they brought it all up, they consolidated, and then they shifted back out again. How can we use this chart to understand the psychology of traders? Pretty simple. Check this out. By the utility of the hybrid system, we were getting an idea that they were probably getting ready to try and recover these vector candle points because psychologically, this is people buying crypto. This is people selling crypto and going back into USDT. Okay. You notice here that they were trying to transact at the lows. The green vector candles pushing below at the lowest point in the chart. Remember what we said? We want to see activity happening at the lowest point of the chart. You want to see buying happening at the lowest point. And how do you establish that? You can establish that by the delta. You can establish that by the green vector candles because the green vector candles tells you that the transactions or the ticks or the amount of times that price changes in a particular point is granting that there could be an interest to see price go up in the opposite direction. So if it's going down, you are favoring higher prices because you see these green vectors appearing at the lows. We see a big push up on the green vector candle zone right there. A big push up in the US Brinks box. And this is part of a vector candle strategy, which is the first green vector candle that appears above the 50 EMA. And in this instance, you can't trade USDT, but you can use it to psychologically understand traders' commitment in crypto and out of crypto. This is the power of this chart. 
You are understanding the commitment. How often are they transacting to get rid of crypto and buy it back up? Okay. Now that we've got the imbalance lower and that has been fulfilled, now we can see that they are stalling inside of this zone. Now, Asia likes to get into the habit of selling off. So that means they like to pick up crypto. Go into any Asian session, you see that they're dropping price. Go into another Asian session, what we got? Asian session right here, drop in price. So would it principally be that traders have now taken a profit on Bitcoin and now Bitcoin is cheaper? Could we go on the assumption that USDT is going to shoot back down again to come back into these vector zones, which would then lead in, in principle, Bitcoin to try and move back up? Ultimately, Bitcoin right now is at a key point in the chart, which is the psychological levels, which is the same spot that they previously moved away from at the start of the week. Well, tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we ain't got no news announcements. It's a free day tomorrow. And on Thursday as well. Well, high impact news, that is. We haven't got to worry about no consumer confidence. We've got no Fed um, pal speaking. I do believe that we do have a few guys speaking tomorrow. Here we go. We've got um, Lagarde speaking, pending home sales, Bollard speaking, and Powell speaking as well. It's not that impactful. It might make the markets move, but it ain't as impactful as the consumer confidence or, more importantly, Friday's news announcements for the core price index, which is what the Fed uses to determine the state of inflation and how aggressive they're going to get in December's next meeting. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to ask yourself the question, is Bitcoin going to go up? We need to make sure that we can establish that this zone is finalized. And what you're looking for is you're looking for more commitment like this. You're looking for green vector candles to appear. Now, don't just blindly go long when you see vector candles. You have to pay attention to the dominance of the dollar. Now, the dominance of the dollar is going to close in 15 minutes time and won't open again until 1 a.m. UK time. All right. Euro USD taken a nosedive, but has now managed to stabilize. Could we be in line for a little bit of a recovery across the board up until when the dominance of the dollar chart actually opens again? So in other words, guys, whatever happens, if Bitcoin starts moving up, you've got a window until 1 a.m. to capitalize on it. If it can't move up as far as you want it to move up and it doesn't really show that strength, just be mindful. The dollar dominance might actually come and kick in to come in to recover these vector candle points right here and probably try and make another stab at the upside. No different to what they did a couple of nights ago. So just be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. This is a 17 minute video, which originally was a 10 minute video, but we managed to get engaged in some learning. Mad love and respect, you beautiful people. Take care of yourselves. Peace.